Today's episode is brought to you by Polar Monkeys Cold Plunges. I often find myself deep diving into techniques, tools, and products that elevate our daily rituals, optimize performance, and enhance our well-being. And let's talk about cold immersion for a moment. Polar Monkeys is at the forefront of merging style with functionality. When I say they create the coolest designs, I'm not just referring to temperature. Polar Monkeys Cold Plunges are also art pieces, but it's not just about looking good. It's about quality products at a fair price. In a market that can sometimes seem prohibitive cost-wise, Polar Monkeys stands out with its commitment to fair prices and quality. If you haven't yet experimented with the benefits of cold immersion from boosting mood, mental clarity, and focus to better sleep and recovery, now might be the time. For listeners of our podcast, Polar Monkeys is extending an exclusive offer. Head over to their website, polarmonkeys.com, and use the code COA and Nate for a special $100 off your order. So deep dive, refresh, rejuvenate, and make a statement while you're at it. Thanks to Polar Monkeys Cold Plunges, and big shout out to them for supporting the podcast and, of course, for making Cold Plunges not just a ritual, but a statement of style and accessibility. Well, what I was saying was... We should start podcasting before we work out. We go from the <laughs> podcast into the workout, so we're yes. all fired up instead of instead dead of on the couch. Like we do right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's heavy. But anyway, you guys, welcome back to the Nate and Koa podcast. If you're on YouTube, like this video, subscribe to our channel, check us out on Apple, Spotify, all the other podcasting platforms. And this podcast, we have a lot of stuff to talk about, especially with all the contests and stuff going on here. And Nate's brother actually won the Pipe Masters. Yes. Just recently. So to recap, basically, since our last podcast where we talked about like the first opening swell, uh, if you guys haven't seen that, it's a good listen to because we talk about the first opening winter swell and as far as well as Pipe first swell there was like a really gnarly injury from one of the top guys and then we heard one of the gnarliest stories in between us and our friends eli tell the terrifying rebar story so if you guys haven't go check that one out but since then we had entered the period for the vans pipe masters um and it's a similar formatted contest to the backdoor shootout you basically surf three times with a team and then the top four guys based off their top three waves at the end of the three rounds will go to the final and then you have priority the previous three rounds don't have priority you have priority in that final and um it's just a top two waves but it's interesting because they did a heat draw um yeah and so the heat draw works like this uh, Vans has a barbecue. They bring all the athletes that are in the event, the invitees to the uh, the little event they set up, and then they have a box of names. And it was Nathan Fletcher and my wife Mahina was doing the heat draws. And so the box of names scrambled between the the men and women. And up on a board, they have empty heats, heats one through ten for the men and one through five, I think, for the women. Or yeah, one, five, I, one yeah. through five. And so four man heats, four man heats. They just draw names at random out of that box. And this is cool because um, on one hand, it's nerve wracking. And on the other hand, Sorry. it just makes it pretty fun and exciting is you draw that name out and the guys that get randomly drawn in the beginning have first pick of heats. So then you're thinking like, oh, do I want to surf first heat of the morning? Well, maybe not. It might be morning sickness. So then all of a sudden, everyone very quickly realizes when the heat draw is happening, how do we strategize to be in the best heats on day one um, at the best time? And that's usually like that 9.30 to 11.30 window at pipe, like once yeah. the sun hits it and cleans off the morning sickness. And so we're all sitting there and we're drawing, right? And a lot of guys are getting drawn before us. And right away, I think heat four and five filled up super quickly. Yeah, the heat you wanted to be in. And so it got dynamic, right? Because you look at who's invited and it's like all of us um, and North Shore guys and then like guys you know are like pretty aggressive in a heat, like a, a Billy or like well, someone who's like gonna, you think might be paddle battling because it's no priority. So yeah. then you have the Craig yeah. Andersons and like, well, yeah, that's the thing. Half of the field is these foreigners. Yes. Who don't know pipe super well, which is like, if it was up to me, 
like I, because when I my name got drawn, I put myself in a heat with no one. Yeah, which was bad because no one wanted to surf against me. Yeah, when they were getting drawn, they're like, oh, I'm not gonna go in Koa's heat. Yeah, so by the end, I was left with the only people who just so happened to be like Eli Mackay and Jamie <laughs> yeah. O'Brien. Yeah, like one of like. The gnarliest heats of the event it of was guys like you the, probably don't want to be in a heat with at Pipe. The last people you want to be in a heat with. And it was the only heat that was all locals. Yep. And um, ideally, if it was like up to me and I could pick my heat, like actually, it would have been with like three guys not from here who don't know the reef. And yeah. on top of that, there's no priority. So Pipe, if you know the wave super well, you can pal around someone very easily to get yep. the wave. Yep. But when you're in a heat with someone like you were as well, mm -hmm. or you guys were probably taking turns and stuff. But we were taking turns, yeah. Like we didn't really have any of that tension either in our heat, like you would have thought. But yeah. I would have loved to be in a heat with like, I, there was tons of names on there I didn't know. So I was like, just any all those guys. Exactly. Yeah. But so like for instance, I got the exact opposite. Yeah, you got the opposite. Like a heat filled up with foreigners, and I think. Um, like there was one more, I think it was heat four, one more slot left and Billy like went bang. Like, and it was like, yeah, who was in that heat? I'm trying to think it was, um, exactly who was in the heat. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. <laughs> Just Billy, but he chose a heat where he could yeah. be like pretty aggressive. And again, these are non-elimination heats, but there is a factor of like, I'll, do I want to give myself a chance to just catch more waves in the heat? And so this is all going down and everyone's like getting more nervous. Like me and Eli haven't been drawn yet. And then Koa draws and chooses heat six and he's alone in this heat. And Koa literally sat alone in this heat until the like, I'm pretty sure it was the last five names. There was one spot left in the last heat of the day <laughs> yeah. and one spot left in the first heat of the day. And Koa's and like, what the hell? No one wants to surf with me. Makai goes up and is like, didn't want to surf in the first or last. He's like, oh... All right, I'm going to go with Koa. Yeah. I was looking around, I'm like, oh, Jamie and Eli hasn't been chosen yet either. And all of a sudden, Jamie gets up there, he's looking around, just like, hmm, what heat should I go in? And he's like, oh, oh well, heat six. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. no. Like, for Jamie, it doesn't matter who's in his heat. He's like, I know I'm going to get more. For him, he was just like, yeah. I'm going to choose whatever's available at the best time he thinks pipe is going to be good. Yeah. And that was like heat six. But it was funny because... Oh, and then Eli comes up and just went rogue as well. Yes. And just was like, yep. Because he had, on. Eli had one in nine available. And then yeah, one in, uh, one in 10. One in 10. One yeah. in 10 were available heats to go into, and he went heat six. But we all didn't know. They explained it to us, but we clearly just didn't listen. Yeah. That they're going to shuffle the heats. Yes. So, so we that's thought, round okay, one. whatever you. Because they said you surf against everyone that you're with the whole event. Mm -hmm. So we just thought, okay, this is the structure. Yep. It'll I be don't like want to be in the first heat. I do not want to yep. be in the last heat. Yep. And then so I could see where they were coming from too. But then it ended up just being an all local heat. Yeah. And your guys' heat ended up being pretty sick. On the you guys flip had side. All brothers. Yeah. Uh, I sat down with John and Ivan card. and I told them how the draw is going to work. And I was like, yo, what do you think? You want to like, how should we strategize this? Like, do you want to maybe us go into different heats with like non-local guys or whatever? And then we're like, oh, like, let's, why not like just be all in the same heat if we can organize this? But this is a random draw and we, none of us know when we're going to draw. And so like yeah. we had that as first plan. And then obviously first heats, like if we get a chance, one of us gets a chance, what heat do we choose where there's a higher chance of getting, John and Ivan in that heat later if they're drawn after me or vice versa for Ivan and John. Um, and so right away those heats filled up. That would be like the best timing of the day. So when I got drawn, heat nine was empty. And I just said, oh, I got drawn first. And I was like, okay, biggest chance of getting my brothers in the heat is this empty heat. I went empty heat. And like two names later, Emio gets drawn. You guys probably have heard or seen Emio, incredible surfer from Tahiti, um, some insane backside barrel riding. Emio Cermak, is that how you say it? I'm not even going to try to If you that. haven't seen him, look him up. He's like a really talented guy and our friend from Tahiti. He he comes and puts his name next to me. And I was like, I, Emio's a friend, but I was like, oh shit, Like now there's only two slots open for John and Ivan. Luckily, Ivan gets picked. 
he gets his name in there. And now it's me, Ivan, and Emio, one slot open. And like six guys get drawn. They hover over the heat for a second and then don't choose it. And somehow it ends up where like none of them choose that last slot. John's name get drawn and he wasn't there. So I walked up and put his name in. And then it got to be a heat between me, John, and Ivan, and Emio, which was just epic. And we were, like you said, like taking turns in the heat. So it was, it was super mellow. But we got to surf three rounds together at Pipe. So that was epic. And you guys got some good waves in your heat, too. Yeah, our first heat, we kind of, for what that day was, I mean, actually, yeah. there was like certain heats in the day one that really scored, and guys were able to oh, get like it was some. Right after my heat. Yes. Yeah, it was, uh, it was Mason and Noah. Mason and Noah's heat. Like, Noah got Fashion, two yeah. backdoor waves that were yeah, killer. Yeah. Or oh, and Mikey Noah and February. Mikey Fed, yeah. 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 It was so good. So that's like, there's like pros and cons, right, to this event setup, which is you are going to surf three times, non-elimination in your first heat, um, but you're not surfing against the guys in your heat who are on the same conditions you're surfing, right? You could surf against a guy in a later round when the waves are either pumping um, and they get scores that you had no chance to get. Um, and you're still competing against that person or vice versa. You score super hard and then the rest of the day goes to shit and those yeah. guys don't. And you're like, yes, but like it works both ways. So it's an interesting format, but, um, but then that's why they shuffle it throughout the days mm -hmm. to hopefully make it fair for everyone to get to surf at different times of the day. How, how was your guys first heat? Uh, it was bad. Yeah. Super bad. And then, because you know how pipe is, it goes through windows of yeah. 30 minutes good, 30 minutes bad, or like hour good, hour bad. You must be sitting there for a while. And if you just end up in the heat that's on the bad side of it, you're kind of just blown. But it is cool that you get to surf again, like the shootout. But uh, yeah, I'm not too sure who had the best heat. I would say it was... Well, the thing is, too, Makana was in the first heat of the day, yeah, first day, and ended up getting into some other heats and found waves in shitty conditions, and yep. that got him into the final. Yep. So there's chances for, like, Pipe just gives you chances, and it's all about yes. being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. So the fact that you get to surf it a bunch of times without losing is super sick. But yeah, because imagine, I mean, we already know, because shootout is notorious for being three or four days of actual firing pipe. Yeah. And we're getting to surf pipe repetitively as good as it gets with four <laughs> of your homies out. Like, yeah. Our shootout heat is super sick. It's yeah. me, Koa, Eli, and Ivan. And, and um, I, I forget a his friend. name. A friend from Brazil. And so we're... Five-man heat. Yeah. Like, but it's just the homies in a heat, and hopefully it's firing, but we get to surf pipe bunch of times in a row without yeah. that crowd and the shootout for some reason like every year just gets like i don't know how many wave of the winters were one during the shootout a lot. my wave of the winter was one during the shootout mine yeah kaito's dude jamie's so jerry no jamie's was a free surf what? but he's one too he's one too yeah. yeah that's just crazy but uh yeah luck somehow the shootout just gets such good waves every year and the pipe masters gets such bad waves every year yeah and the first day of the pipe masters was the probably the best day somehow like it, it wasn't that good a pipe but it ended up being the best day yeah day two was really bad day two was crazy that they were scoring the same uh for the day so here's where some controversy comes in yep. i'd say is like okay say you get an eight on day one and the waves are pumping or their scoring's even crazy. I don't even say so you get it's out of a so it's three judges and it's the total instead of the yeah. average. Which John I was saying to John, he said this might actually be more accurate than the WSL, which takes an average. So Where you get drop a rounding error. error. Yeah. The the bottom score is rounded up and the top score of the judges is rounded down, and then you get an average. Where this is just simple, you add each score up and that total is your score. Yeah. I mean, it was just confusing for me being out there, and I would get like a shitty wave, and they'd be like, "Oh, you got a 12. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like I'm killing it. But you need a thirty-five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get, I'm like, what? Yeah. 
But uh, I lost track of what I was saying. Oh, no, no. Back to the... So say you get an eight on day one, right? And it's eight to 10 foot firing pipe. You get blown out of a pipe wave. Mm -hmm. Whereas day two, guys were getting eights on tiny little back door waves and then doing a turn or two turns after. Yes. And all the scores are accumulatively brought together. Yes, yeah, so like say like that guy gets spit out of a 10 footer day one. The guy that got two small crumbly back door waves and did two turns and maybe an air, he might be in the final. Yes, which was a huge factor yeah. on day two. Like those scores carry through the whole round. So there's just like, yeah. maybe there's like a way to clean it up or a system where it's like, like the, there's a cut and then the top well, 20 well, go on and then the top 10 go on and then the top four go on. Or like there's a way to do it that would eliminate that where the, the score, like scores that shouldn't carry are not carried through like in that way because of a yeah. guy getting a huge score on a shitty day versus, but then he got that score that day. So I don't know. It's well, the reason confusing. that the backdoor shootout works, cause you know how there'll be days during the backdoor shootout where we're like, Oh, it looks good. We want to surf, but there's no way you're going to get a score today. That's going to be even in comparison to the waves we got the other day. If yeah. It was firing 10 foot pipe. Yep. So we just go out and surf and have our fun, mm -hmm. but that only works because there's no final. Yes. So you, it, it's not like you're competing to get into the top four, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Whereas, I don't know, I guess it does work if there's a final. We need some serious brains behind this one. Which we don't have. <laughs> yeah, we don't, my brain is fried right now from this past weekend, dude. Yeah. So anyway, the contest goes on. It ends up being um, where... The final heats are ran. Makana gets himself into the final, which is epic. Um, John is in the final, of course. He's just he's surfing against mere mortals. It was just so event. easy for him. He was like, just laughing. Like, you give me three chances to get three scores. Like, I yeah. usually do this in the last two minutes yeah. of a CT heat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and so he's just, like, running through these heats. Like, I, I remember he needed a score to keep himself in the top two, not even the top four, just uh -huh. the top two for the final, and he caught a single wave in the final round of our three rounds, sat the whole heat, totally patient. Me, I'm going on these rogue waves, trying to get a 17. Ivan's going on rogue waves. Emil's going on rogue waves. John just sits, 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 sits. Of course, wave comes to him. He gets like yeah. a 23, goes to the lead again. Yeah. Like, caught one wave that whole heat. And so you just see that, like, but the other day, There's too, levels. Like, even if there was like a halfway cut like we were talking about or whatever, John on the small day was just like, he's just, the level is so different, especially yeah. competitive surfing, because he'll take a wave that majority, pretty much everyone in that event would have got, say, Like the max score they can on. get is a yeah. six. He will turn that into an eight. He just <laughs> yeah. consistent yeah. eights no matter yeah. what. And that's totally. always enough to just be in yes. the top and then be in the lead. Like the final, his final was crazy. He got one wave that was his one of his top scores and then a wave on the way back out that was his top score. I don't think anyone made a wave in the final but John. It was the Everyone worst else went straight. conditions and waves, one, but... yeah, of all time at yeah. Pipe and for a final too. But John still like put it together. Yeah, got the scores and got drained actually, like yeah. barreled out of everyone. Crazy. And so the final was Billy, Seth Muniz, uh, Makana Peng, and John. And then the results were John first, Makana second, Seth third, Billy fourth. And it was just epic because Makana's a kid who grew up here on North Shore, um, and he's really one of the younger generation that like cared to put the actual like respectable amount of time in that pipe surfing and not when it's just perfect yeah. serving it on every different day and every different condition. And so it was cool to see that pay off for him. And the prize purse is psycho. And like John, it's one thing like, yeah, that hundred K is killer. Um, but for like Makana, the second place got 60 grand. That's like huge, huge, 60. yeah. Huge chunk of money for just someone who's like, I don't know, like, maybe in his pay bracket, you know, like that's just a large amount of money. Um, it's and probably so more than what Volcom pays him or. Yeah. Like we don't even know, but maybe like annually, like it's just, it's a lot of money for anybody. Um, but so that was super cool. And that 
on the other end of Except John. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure John thought that was nice. <laughs> but for John, I think those wins come down to just like pure dominance mode, like oh, I've shown them again. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to teach a lesson. <laughs> he doesn't even care about the money. Yeah. He's like, I'm just the best. But um on the women's side, double time champ, Moana Jones, again, someone who just knows pipe more than a lot of the other girls and Better oh, than has. pretty much any girl. And maybe rode better waves than a ton of the guys. Because she better had the heat. Than me. Like, she had some psycho, actual, legitimate pipe barrels. And um, was, like, not just, like, I say this, like, there's people who just go out to pipe and they get on a pipe wave and they're along for the ride. And then there's the people that you see start to progress to where they're surfing the wave and maneuvering on the wave. Like, she's pumping. She's positioning herself. She's, like changing her line to in order to make it and that's when you see like that stuff start to progress so we were super proud of moana and makana and that actually that chick molly i saw her do a backside yeah. pump on her rail and i was like these chicks are getting nuts like whoa the girls are getting good <laughs> usually i mean for the last 10 years it's like you know it's it's carnage like yeah just chaos wipeouts but they're they're starting to get um technically good at barrel riding I will say though the finals was it the finals day that was really good in the morning, remember? Yeah, it was a lot better in the morning than it every was in the girl was sitting, um, at gums. Of course, they were off the reef, but it was like twelve foot yeah. pipe. That was beautiful yeah. pipe. Yeah, but they were definitely on the side. But they are progressing a lot. Well, Moana and, and Molly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got better. They pretty much all got better waves than me. Like, but seeing on the beach, being a spectator, I was like, yeah. Oh, if you guys could just move over a little bit, <laughs> like you're in the spot. I just want to like get an orange t shirt and just be like, <laughs> Deep that there. way, that way, please. Um, Remember when we were at Grom's? We, uh, that, that happens with the boogie boarders too, their contest. Yeah. It's pretty funny. And that was when I realized that not all bodyboarders are built the same. I just thought, like, you're a bodyboarder, you're a slab guy. That's, like, that's yeah. the thing. But it, it's not. There's, like, small wave bodyboarders that ended up, like, maybe they're, like, competing, doing their spinners or whatever. And then all of a sudden they're tossed out of pipe. Because we would see heats. Like, we were Grom sitting at gums, foaming, and it's 10-foot pipe. And, like, yeah. maybe Jeff Hubbard was just going getting blown out of barrels and there was the other three solo. guys are sitting next to us by himself. We're like, what, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah. Like contests bring out a funny crowd because there's I guess in all sports, bodyboarding, surfing and whatever, they bring like there's the guys that consistently do contests that deserve to be in every contest. Yeah. You know, but then they get to a place like pipeline and it really shows and separates the people that actually know how to surf it or just even where to sit. Or just focused on even rounding out their surfing enough to be comfortable in a little bit larger surf. Yeah, yeah, like, true. You just all of a sudden it's very polarized on like, oh, shoot, like I thought this guy was the best surfer in the world and now he can't catch a wave. At yeah. Pipe. And that goes both ways. Like throw us in a heated Huntington. <laughs> so, I'm not, it's not going to be pretty. I'm just calling people out. I'm not saying I can do everything. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it goes both I'm ways. I'm not trying to get into the US Open. No, no. Uh, but, but these guys are out at pipe, you yeah, know? So yeah. it's like, obviously, if I showed up and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be in this contest. I deserve to be here. Yeah. And I went out to the US Open and it was two feet. Yeah. I'd look like a clown. Yeah. Against those guys, yeah. for sure. I'd be like, I know my place. But you know, <laughs> I know, you know my place. Yeah. So another thing on that note is with all like the stuff coming out um, on toe surfing and stuff, like, I don't, okay, you might know more about this than me, so you can correct me or whatever. But all I've seen from my perspective is HBO just pick up a bunch of toe guys and like kind of glorify these toe in surfers yeah. that really can't paddle a board to save their life yeah. or even let alone do a turn but yeah. they can grab a rope and get whipped into a bomb and i'm like this is showing like tons of people that maybe are new to surfing like oh these are super talented surfers yeah whereas i'm like i don't know if they could even like make a drop at gums yeah on a 
on a heavy sandbar day. Like even like a four foot sandbar day. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy. Well, I, I, I said something like that or was thinking something like that along the lines of like, like you said, you glorify some of these guys that maybe started surfing like a few years ago or have been surfing a long time but never cared to learn a good base of paddle. And then yeah. you're going to see a generation form of younger guys that do not have the base technical surfing ability. They can't yeah. paddle. They n- probably can't duck dive. They are not good yeah, at anything but they were not a duck dive. Toe. Yeah, right? They, and so you... Why would they need to know how? Yeah, there'll be a generation of guys that only know how to grab the rope, which I think is kind of a shame. Like, you, you should at least know the basics of surfing unless you're like some super rich dude and you're like i don't care to know it i just want to go catch a ton of waves yeah but for like glorifying the saying this guy's the baddest dude on the planet in big wave surfing you're like no no that's not the baddest dude on the planet there's guys underground guys and a ton of other guys just paddling slabs that have boogie boarders thousand percent more technical ability (laughs) yeah it's gnarly. It's yeah, well, gnarly. there's another thing going to pop up too, not just these toe in surfers, but there's going to be groms coming up that just surf wave pools. That'll With be a the, thing too. I, I'm excited to see. This is, I'm actually kind of excited to see like in the future, there's going to be kids that just grow up at wave pools. Yeah. And then they're going to hit the ocean one day. Like, say they come to Rockies, tossed into chaos. Just in, like, that must, that's going to be. Such pure chaos. Dude, because that's such an interesting thought is there'll be a full generation of kids that can't surf in the ocean. Yeah. What think about like the ocean t- teaches you everything in comparison to a wave pool that like Waco gives you three waves. You catch one and then the set's done and you paddle back out. Yeah. No and duck it's diving. in the same spot every single time. A wave is perfect. So there's going to be these groms growing up these days that just surf wave pools and they're gonna just i'm i'm super curious to see what happens it's gonna it's gonna split again into like where to where it becomes different sports yeah the pool guys that's their own sport it's a different sport those toe guys that's their own sport and then there's like the main sport of surfing where someone can do everything yeah but yeah trippy it's gonna be an interesting transition period because there's so much technology and so much like eyeballs on everything now. Like yeah. what we think is cool. Like we might be those old guys being like, Oh fuck that. Back totally. in my day. Totally. We used our arms to paddle yeah. the big waves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and guys are just like, things progressed for a reason, old man. <laughs> yeah. Like look what, look what we're doing now. There's like, going to be Damn. wave pools that are as big as fucking jaws. Chopes is a pool in the middle of America. Imagine that, huh? I'd go to that pool. I would love that. <laughs> that would be that, sick. That would be crazy. Padded bottom. We just got to figure out how to become one of the owners, like a Kelly Slater. But yes. we make our own that are way different and better. The slab tour is just a pool tour. And it's just me and you up there commentating everyone surfing. <laughs> Still the podcast is just picking <laughs> <Yeah>. apart <laughs> other people surfing pools. We should let Kelly we should ask Kelly to let us come over there and commentate. Um <laughs> oh, we should be the commentators at the WSL Wave Pool event. Yes. We should tell them to let us do it. Imagine sitting there all day and trying to commentate. No that. chance. <laughs> We'd have to be hammered. The only way. <laughs> we would have we would to be, get so bored. Yeah. There's just yeah, something about like you see it Over with that. even like the public like watching the the pool events they get so bored, so bored. There's just uh, there's such a factor taken out of it that causes you to lose interest when it's pretty much gonna like definitely be the same wave every time. The surfing might vary, yeah. but almost everybody is gonna do the same turns on the same turn section, same barrel on the barrel section, and then air to end. Yeah, and it's it almost like. It's like here's your everything you have to do, and you have to connect the dots, and if you complete it, you win. Yes. You know, like you can do three turns here before the barrel, get a barrel, come out, do two cutbacks or yeah. a, a turn, and if you can like connect the full dots, you get the score. Yeah. Because it's not like, oh, this guy needs a 10. He's either going to need to do the biggest air of all time 
or get like super barreled or something, you know? Yeah. No, I agree. It's it, it's going to be really cool to see where it does go, say in like 10 years from now, when all these new wave pil- pools are built and toe and surfing's gotten even crazier, paddle surfing, surfing's gotten even crazier, more people are going to be new to the sport. I wonder if it's, it'll introduce, like everything will get more crowded or like oh, guys will be sure. like, dude, I don't want to go grind it out looking for a wave in the ocean. I'm just going to the pool and the lineups will get less crowded. I don't know, dude. Is there going to introduce more people <laughs> or or let people are going to stop trying to gamble on if they're going to get away? Like imagine you work a nine to five and you're like, I want to go on a surf trip, but like I risk not getting waves. But I know if I go to this pool with my best friends, we're all going to score and have the sick time. Like they might start diverting surf trips to that. Yeah. I think they do already. Already, guys go to they, Waco. They're yeah, like, Waco dude, we're not going to Mental Wise. Yeah. But then again, you do have to be able to come up with like thousands of dollars yeah. to rent it out rather than like getting a plane ticket, staying in a fucking hostel and just paddling out to Rocky Point. Yeah. Well, it's still thousands of dollars. <laughs> it is. <laughs> the hostels here in are, are like $600 for a bunk bed. Yeah. It's interesting. And then you get, I mean, imagine someone staying here like, they came for their big trip, and it's been like it has been the last two weeks. Yeah. Like, the ocean is just... It's, it's been so stormy here, you guys. Like, right the day the Pipe Masters ended, this weather pattern we've gotten into, it's been like 65 degrees Fahrenheit, which I know a lot of you out there are going to be like, oh, like, that's so warm. What are you talking about? It's the middle of winter here. It's like 45 degrees. Yeah. 35 <laughs> degrees. But... For here, that's cold. And it's been like that for almost two weeks now. Yeah. Just crazy. rainy, stormy, north swell. It's been epic for foiling. Has it, though? What happened to you yesterday? <laughs> I've Tell had, them that story yes, that you told me today. That was a horror story. <laughs> was, I had one of the... So we've been doing downwind foiling, and we got these new boards. like These prone boards are a little bit longer um, that you're meant to stand up paddle on, but John and I have been proning them. <laughs> And it's been giant northeast swell. So when that happens, like the swell goes down the coast in a way where you can go out if the wind's really strong and you foil, we call it downwinding. But when there's northeast swell, you're really just riding like 10, 15 foot swells down the coast for like 10 miles. Speaking of new sports, that's going to be another one that's going to be super popular. 100% this will be a racing league when it comes down to it because it's guys are already battling on... Who has the fastest average time? Who has the fastest gear and equipment? Who's the most fit? Who can pump the farthest? Like that we stuff's already going down. put them really close, down. like these little buoys, and there's like thirty of them, and they all all have to be right next to each other. Yeah, well, dude, they that's how they started the foiling segment uh, or category in the Molokai. Like they lined oh, them all up sick. between two buoys and said, "Fucking go!" And then guys Wait, how raced. Do, do they? How do they start they the Molokai? They stand up paddle. They're so gnarly. Oh. Some of them are good enough to stand up paddle themselves. They're like four foot foil. Dude, into a foil on flat water. Wow. And they're pumping and going. And the rest are not, so they have to get to the wind chop. That's crazy. It's crazy. But it's so fun. Like me and John have just been doing it because it's, it's like snowboarding almost. Like you're out there in the wind and you're riding a wave that isn't breaking. Um, and you're just going for 10 miles and reading the ocean and being in the ocean. But... Just the energy, man. Back to your story. Things take a turn. And so we get out there, and I quickly realize, like, wow, this east swell is way bigger than I thought. And me and John are trying new foils, and we're with Matali Drolet from Tahiti. He loves the foil, too. He's on his trusted wing. He gets up. He goes. And this area that we're in, like, it's a spooky area. Pretty much, if you look at every tracked shark um, in Hawaii, there's like a shark tracker website you can see where they've pinged their location. This area is covered in yellow dots, yeah. which means they're just circling and cruising out there. But even just us, like you just take the ski out on even calm days and you just go putt around on it. You'll s- a lot. I've seen a lot of sharks. Yes. And so this area we try to get through quickly. Yeah. It's like the first uh, two miles of the run and or two or three miles. And it's in a stretch of coast where there's not much houses in front. Um, but anyway, we get up course, we go buddy system most times. This time I decided me and John were like, dude, we're on our big boards. We're good. Like we have leashes on. We're not going to lose the board. 
We never re- wear leashes usually. We're on bigger boards. That's how a bad story always starts. Always. Like, yeah, it's all good. This is going to be fine. We're doing some sort of safety program before, and we decide, let's go solo this time. <laughs> yeah. He's like, okay. I get up on a wave, and I go. And I look back, and John's like, go, go, go. I'll get the next one. And so I'm, I'm pumping, and we're on these really fast, um, uh, smaller foils for you foil nerds. It's the Lift High Aspect 110s. So they're small foils meant to go really fast and you have to maintain a really high speed to keep the foil up out of the water. If you slow down, it drops out. And so I'm like going mock speed and keep having to turn into sets because my legs are burning. So like I can't pump out to the wind line where I want to be safe away from these big second reefs. Keep having to turn into sets. And I think I'm like, I pass Turtle Bay and I'm getting out there like, oh, like I might be... um, far enough out and I just see like this wave pop up as I'm trying to cut out to sea and I'm now getting pretty far out this wave 15 foot maybe bigger like this is like 25 30 foot face for people who are judging that way is popping up and I'm like oh my god like what am I gonna do here I'm not going fast enough to get around behind it I need to like turn and catch it and the foils are fast enough to maybe ride it but this wave was starting to break and so I try to like shoot in front of it to get to the shoulder of it and the other side. And what ends up happening is just like, I've foiled down when it's so many times and I've always thought like, man, if you fell out here, it would be an absolute nightmare if you lost your board. <laughs> this lip lands on my back leg and I feel it just perfectly peel my leash off. Like the lip power just shot my leash Velcro off and I go flying in the air, pop up and don't even have time to think. I see the board like a hundred foot away. I'm like, start to swim towards it, turn around, there's a bigger set, dive under that, almost get sucked over, look in, the board is gone. And I'm like, oh shoot, like the board's gone. Like, okay, I take stock, where am I? How far out am I really? And I realize I'm like three quarters of a mile out off the coast and I could see just the trees looking very small in the distance. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I don't have anything on me, nothing but my spring suit. And I'm not attached to any board anymore. And I just felt like so like naked almost. I was like, this is not good. And I know where I am is very, very sharky and it's very deep. And it, the water is dark, dark blue on either side of where this wave broke. All stormy and ugly too. It's like, stormy, even, it's like black water. Yeah. And so yeah. this white water is starting to fade to blue again. And I'm like, fuck this. I'm like, I got to get to the reefs, like the big reef line, which is all these fingers of reef. And even then, those fingers of reef are far from where the land is. And so... Yeah, they're like outer reef. Yeah. I start reefs. scratching in. I'm swimming and the white water is fading. And I start like getting this terror in my gut of like, oh my God, if this water goes to clear blue, like I'm just going to be so visible from below. Like I, in my head, yeah. like I'm like, the sharks aren't going to come in the white water. They will never come in here and get me. But it's fading because I'm far enough yeah. out. And as I start to swim, like... There's huge currents out there. I legitimately thought to myself, like, okay, now I'm in, like, a pretty serious situation of, like, I got to, like, really focus and, like, I got to swim really hard to get in because all that water pools off the coast of uh, the island turns back in, so the water pools off past Kahuku. And I'm like, shoot, like, this is, like, gnarly. Nobody is coming to get me. I don't have an Apple Watch on. Like, I just have my Garmin. I mean, the GPS, like... I start thinking bad thoughts, like, <laughs> yeah, we just never saw him again. We tried to track his watch, but that's we where find someone him. would go missing. Yeah. The like that's where there's nothing. That's the far like yeah. That is the Pacific Ocean right there. Yes. If you get swept out there, you there's a chance you're not getting found. Yes. But the tigers will find you. Oh yeah. And that's what I got afraid of. And just then I see off to the side, heading out to sea in the very black water of like the deepest off the ledge, I see the board getting blown in the wind, downwinding. And I'm just like, oh my God, there's my board. Like make a quick decision. Like either I just bail it and continue on my trek in trying to get in. But it was big. It was like 12 foot white waters breaking all around me or on the reef in front of me. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't really want to get pounded on those reef shelves with nothing. And so I'm like, screw it, I'm going for the board. And it's getting blown in the downwind, and I find myself... So you had a choice. You could go in, which was going to be a long-ass swim, or you chase your board that's flying out to sea. Out to sea. Into the darker, deep water. Into the dark, deep water. And I 
and I chose to get the board thinking I, I could swim faster than it seems to be moving. And I just went for it and turned. <laughs> a brave call. Yes, turned off into the white water and immediately, like I, I swam out of the foam and the white water, it just went to black, dark blue. And I was like peaking on adrenaline, literally redlining the fastest I ever swim. It turned into a 10 to 12 minute swim sprint to trace, chase down this board, getting further and further out to sea. And I was realizing like, if I don't get this board, the chances of me getting eaten are going to just increase so much because I've now swam so far from where the waves are. And it was just like, probably like I told these guys, I've been in some very scary situations in the water, but the terror I felt of the anticipation of seeing the shark or thinking it was watching me or think opening my eyes while I'm sprint swimming and I'd lost one contact and I had that sty eye. So all the only eye that was good yeah. and could see any distance was messed up sty eye with that its lens thing was in. Closed yeah. shut. Yeah. And I was literally <laughs> swimming like this, groaning in fear of like, oh my God, I'm gonna get breached by a 20 foot tiger at any second. Ten minutes of that terror, which felt like an eternity. 200 foot away from the board, 100 foot away from the board, <laughs> 50 foot away from the board, and I knew I was getting close, but I just felt like for some reason, I'm not going to make it before it gets me. Like, you know, when you go outside, like even like after you watch a scary movie and you're in the dark and you start to think a scary thought. And as soon as you kind of give in and you're like, I want to get inside a little quick and you start moving yeah, quicker yeah. and like, like, it's going to get me. Yeah, 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 it's right on me. Like <laughs> that feeling. Terror. That's what I had. Terror. Terror. Yeah. And I was swimming 20 foot away and I'm like, any second I'm getting breached. Leash in my hand <laughs> on the board. I just yelling. but you didn't even see a shark yet. You were just it was just shark. all mental, all mental, yeah. all in my head. Like I never came close to it, and I, like my heart rate had gone like one seventy five for the duration of the swim, like peaking for ten minutes. Yeah, and I just got onto the board and laid there for like another 10, 15 minutes, just breathing hard and just thinking like that was the scare. All I wanted to do was be out of the ocean. Jeez, what did it feel like when you finally got to land? <laughs> I was cooked. <laughs> I laid on my back at Keiki because I ended up getting another wave and meant to just go in at yards. I was like, yeah. just make it to yards and get in because I was in no man's land between Cavella and yards. And I yeah. was like, I got up on another wave somehow once I paddled in closer. And then I had like one of the best foil runs ever. So I quickly forgot the traumas. And then I start downwinding. And then I'm like, screw yards, I'm going to Keiki. That's the benefit of having a goldfish brain. <laughs> yeah, that is. Oh, what happened? No traumatic experience. No, nothing scary just happened. I can keep going forever. My leash is solid. Not solid. I laid on the beach for like 10 minutes on my back before walking home. And the funniest part is the whole time I'm thinking John has gone, I get home uh, or to John's house, and I see Matahi's foil, no foil of John's, and I, Ivan, get out here. And then, because I, I just knew how close and weird it was for me, like, I was like, that was like pretty, that could have easily gone the other way. Yeah. Of just being like, oh, that idiot went out there and disappeared. And just left out to sea. Mm hmm. And then uh, now I'm like fearing that John has gotten into some sort of situation, which he definitely had. And you know, it's not really like the ocean usually bends around that guy. Like yeah. it forms to his will. It like seems the finals like. of the fight master. Yes. And he had been on, not as like, he didn't do the death swim march like I did, but he had broken his leash, lost the board. Maybe this was the ocean forming around him. <laughs> caught inside three times. And each time the board popped up right next to him. Holy That's what he shit. said. And he was way outside Turtle Bay. No way. Yeah. And then he gets a wave finally and stands up and he said the, as far as you could see in front of him, turned to whitewater, and he just turned, looped, and went straight in. He was over it. He was over it, and he got picked up at um, Stables. That's so funny that he got picked up where he got dropped off. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't called Eric. He's like, we're picking John up at Stables. He had a nightmare, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, thank goodness he's fine, but I just got in myself. It had Like, an hour and a half had passed on a run that takes 25 minutes. Yeah. So, For those of you who don't know, like, uh, downwinding what Nate's talking about is like they take their foil surfboards that like float above the water kind of on these foils and they go out and catch a little wind chop and then they take that wind chop like a mile and a half two miles out to sea and just ride the wind line across the island so where they were it was like 
deathly scary. Like, yeah. I can't even imagine. Like, I've always been confident, like, where, like, oh, I'll, I can swim in for sure. Yeah. I know I can swim in. I'm fit enough to do it. I'm fit enough to swim in from very far out. What I underestimated was how spooky it is out there. Like, I was like... Dude, it's spooky if you're on a jet ski. Yeah. Like, I was like looking like, down, like, oh, ooh, like, you, like, going you, fishing or something? You might just get so weirded out and scared, you might just attract it. Yeah. The more you think about it. Yeah. I was just like, uh. So, yeah, I definitely have a very healthy fear of giant tigers out there. What a creature, huh? Yes. Tiger sharks. At least we don't got great whites. Well, or do we? Most of the time we do. Like the biggest one ever captured was that chick swimming with one out off of Waikiki or whatever. They caught it? No, they didn't. Ca- they didn't capture it. I mean, footage. Oh, oh. A giant pregnant female. Well, shit. Big we blue or whatever they ones. called it. So scary. And a month ago, Amazing. What, I forget who it was. Our friend Duke said that they spotted orcas. Between the islands. Just gets better, huh? Imagine I think I'm going to get whacked by a shark, and then I really, I'm like, it's an orca. You're 80 feet in the air. <laughs> like, like flying. This couldn't have gotten any worse. Have you seen the way those things play with seals? <laughs> Imagine it seeing a foiler. Like a 500-pound seal. They can throw it like, yeah. like a dog playing with a toy. Gone into the wind. Dude. They, but they don't ever attack humans unless they're in captivity. Yeah, it's really right. strange because I've seen clips of them like swimming near a swimmer and it didn't mess with it, yet it just mutilates seals. And I was like, this thing's smart enough to know that's not a seal, but why How do wouldn't? they know that humans don't taste good? I know, that's why I was like, eh. I mean, they're smart enough to ram or turn a shark over where they go to sleep because they get turned over. The orcas yeah. know how to do that, turn them over, and they um, bite their liver out. Yeah, they just eat the livers, right? They just kill like sharks so and sketchy. whales and eat the liver. Yeah. They bite the whale's tongue out. What? Yeah, because it's like fatty or something. No way. They just leave the, the whale with no lower jaw and no tongue. Holy shit. Yeah. It's what heavy. What a vicious animal. Huh? They're gnarly. They drown the whale. So they know the whale needs to come up for air. So they take turns laying on it. So it, it's under the surface. It can't come up. Drown it. And then they bite its tongue out. Holy shit. How do you know so much about orcas? I'm an orca enthusiast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody knows more than me. Turn your TV on. Your YouTube's just got orca. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Things I shouldn't be watching before driving myself <laughs> far out to sea. Tiger sharks. Where has the biggest great white been spotted? In here. White. <laughs> yes. That's funny. I didn't know we had the biggest great white ever spotted here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, we got the shootout, actually, speaking of, is coming up. What's the waiting period on that? Uh, the backdoor shootouts holding period, I think, is the s- January 2nd to the 16th. January 2nd to the 16th. So um, We have to come up with a name for our team because in the shootout, you have teams you serve with rather than heats you pick. So like a sponsor will pay for your team. And usually you get put with your sponsor guys like four or five people, but this year um, Quicksilver's not sponsoring a team, but me and Nate, Eli and Ivan are all going to be in a heat, so we have to come up with our own name. They should leave some comments. Oh, yeah, you name. guys should comment what you think our team name should be for the shootout. Comments below. Yeah, it's got to be something funny. So um, Boys are pulling up to Ice Bath. That's what's going on. Yeah. So they are here, Jack. Yeah, they came. They're gonna. We're gonna do a sauna ice session, cruise it, and um, happy cool, holidays yeah. to everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We're gonna uh, have a lot more podcasts coming out consistently, and yes. we're gonna get some guests on. Yeah, we, I just talked to Shane Dorian today, so he'll be a great one. Okay, we should get like Shane. Oh, you guys should leave a comment. I know we've asked this a million times, but like Shane, Mark Healy, Makua, yep, Kelly Slater, your brother, our parents. Yeah, our parents, we should just have Alex, your mom, and my dad just come on and host the show. <laughs> yeah, they could temper each other a little bit. Yeah, or we could just get Maku and my dad on. And that would just... be a good show. <laughs> we need more mics. What yeah. if we had like eight mics set up? Imagine the chaos. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Okay, that's it. Cool, thanks for watching, you guys. Listening. <laughs> <laughs>